Well, one quick thing, it, wasn't, it was my understanding that the NLEA, the Original Nutritional Labeling and Education Act, uh, intended to give consumers more truthful uh, yes, that's true. consumer that information. The original congressional intent was to expand right. health claims for products, to recognize that there is this body of health information out there, and to allow this to start filtering through on labels, because Congress had determined that that the, the changes that had gotten through, despite FDA obstruction in terms of like, you know, cholesterol and saturated fat and, and fiber and all this kind of stuff that was actually done over the objections of the FDA, had made such effective changes in American eating habits that Congress just said, wow, let's do more of this. So, Peter, said Peter Hott, Peter Hott, uh, currently a law partner at Covington and Burling, was chief counsel for FDA before going to the private practice of law. This year, at a meeting at which FDA senior officials and food industry leaders were present, he said from the rostrum that FDA has been intentionally perverting the intention and the will of Congress with regard to health benefits information for foods, and that he, for one, was not going to put up with it anymore and is working his level best to see that NLEA is properly applied by FDA and not improperly applied. The only way that we would restrict access to vitamins and minerals is in the case where there was a bona fide safety problem. Absent safety concerns, there's no reason to restrict access to any dietary supplements. So very well demonstrated in the data from the American uh, Poison Control Centers in terms of the, the, the mortality from vitamins versus drugs. And they've studied this for a 10-year period, and there are 3,500 deaths due to over-the-counter and prescription drugs, and one death attributed to vitamins. And so why would the FDA be, be you know, jumping up and down and, and yelling about the dangers from supplements uh, when they're not at all they don't think that this is a significant issue in terms of all these prescription drugs and non-prescription drugs in terms of, of the risks to Americans. And those are only the ones logged in the poison registry. We do, in fact, from AMA data, have reason to, uh, to, uh, to know that we lose an extra 100 to 150,000 people a year from the adverse consequences of medications. With regard to supplements, the evidence of safety both at the molecular level, at the clinical level, at the experience level. Because as we said, there are over 100 million Americans who are now taking supplements with some regularity. And many millions of those people taking supplemental doses. That is what is necessary for their body's chemistry to work at its highest level and most efficient way. Uh, this provides really abundant information in the marketplace, in the laboratory, in the clinical experience of those who will look at it about the safety of supplements. So if you were going to have to have a prescription to get vitamins, how do you feel about that? Well, I, I mean, I don't know what the reason is. I, I think it's a little silly. Prescriptions are for, you know, drugs and things that you generally need when you're ill or whatever. Vitamins are something people take to keep healthy or for deficiencies, things like that. And I think, you know, if they're going to make it harder for people to get, um, it's like, in a way, putting a prescription on food and things like that. Because to me, vitamins are something you take um, for a deficiency or something you need to stay healthy, to stop getting ill. My name is William Daly. I'm an attorney. I went to uh, Boston University School of Law. Uh, for several years now, I've been representing alternative health care practitioners. And they've inspired me. I'm trying to practice what I call preventive law. Uh, rather than get them out of trouble, uh, I'm trying to keep them out of trouble. A century ago, there was actually a licensed practitioner in California and a number of other states called an eclectic practitioner, and that's what we really need. An eclectic practitioner is someone who is based in natural remedies and then used anything that worked, anything that was appropriate for that patient, and that's the kind of practitioner we need today. Marty? I'm Marty Arquette and I'm a psychotherapist and I'm surviving cancer using alternative health means and I certainly don't want my freedom of choice taken away and I work with a lot of AIDS patients and I have seen the terrible truth of what happens to AIDS patients when they go down that one main road and uh, I feel that they deserve and I deserve, we all deserve, our children deserve, I'm a mother and a grandmother too, um, 
we deserve the right to choose for ourselves how we choose to survive in this world. And I don't feel that I want to support any kind of repression put upon me by the government. And repression also of the truth of um, this actually happening, because I don't understand why it's not known. Uh, like Lisa said, why? I think there's more to it that it's not known. It's just not accidental. I, I think that they must be suppressing it because they have a big lobby to do so. Well, I think it's a sad thing, and we do have a lawyer present, so I'll be careful what I say here, but I, I do think, uh, maybe you can add on this, uh, William Daly, uh, the fact is, is there's a lot of money that is made in medicine. I think that has to be spoken about here. I mean, we all know that. I mean, uh, would you say that's one of the problems we're having, or would you say that's just not part of the program, greed? Well, I'd say that uh, greed is definitely part of the program. Uh, also, simply the way people are taught. Allopathic doctors are generally good people. It's their education that's really handicapped them. Uh, the fact that they aren't taught about these things does create a very serious blind spot. The fact that they've been told for decades now that, all, that nutrition doesn't play a role, that it can be quackery, uh, plays a serious role. Uh, as far as money goes, well, you know, the supplement industry uh, a couple of years ago was uh, total about 3.3 uh, .3 billion dollars. The pharmaceutical industry spends four times that much on research and development alone. So you can get a kind of an idea of how many dollars are involved in all of this. Three point what? Three billion. Billion. Yes. Billion. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. They Skip, you could, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just remember four times over 12 billion on research and development of new pharmaceuticals. So it's, they're very serious, they don't want competition. It's economics when it really boils down to it. It's not greed as in a moral ne uh, sense, it's simply good business to make sure your competition doesn't get up on you. Yeah, and it's, it, I'd like to also point out that in the, the recent FDA task force report on dietary supplements, they blatantly mm -hmm. state that they're, they are to ensure that dietary supplements on the marketplace do not uh, provide a disincentive for drug development. So in a sense, with that statement, they're basically admitting that they are in there to ensure that the drug companies can make money and develop drugs without competition with nutrients. Yes. And it's important to put the task force report in some context. The report does not stand as FDA's official position on any issues related to dietary supplements. Two years ago, the commissioner asked a group of very senior and experienced FDA officials to review the various regulatory options that FDA has at its disposal to assure the safety and proper labeling of dietary supplements. That task force did its job. It, it, it made a series of recommendations to the commissioner the spring of 1992, and that's all they are, recommendations to the commissioner. Um, the FDA report, they said, that they were concerned, that their major concern was that they wanted, they were concerned that uh, dietary supplements um, d did not act as a disincentive to drug development. Right. That makes it pretty clear. They are definitely pro-drug. Paul, well, can you, just before we go 